The burning question that we have been exploring now over several lessons is what do leaders need to know? What do they need to do? What should they say when it comes to a crisis or a time of pandemic? And there are a number of different answers, and we have not exhausted the subject. We certainly know the, the need for courage to make that decision to act bravely in a time when we're scared to death. We know that a time of crisis brings change. And as leaders, we have to learn how to navigate that change in a biblical way. We also talked about the importance of being connected as leaders to those who are following. And of course, we, are, we must work in cooperation with one another as leaders and walking alongside those that we are leading. We've talked about the importance of confidence and having confidence in the promises of God and confidence in ourselves as leaders, but as well instilling confidence in those who follow. And we talked about communication and how vital communication is, being transparent and communicating frequently and learning to be active listeners. In this last segment, as we talk about this idea of how to lead during a time of crisis or during a time of pandemic, I want us to look at what I consider to be the bedrock, the cornerstone foundation that is needed for leaders when it comes to leading during a time of crisis or pandemic. And perhaps on this bedrock, all of these other areas that we have talked about find their proper place. And what I'm talking about is character. General Norman Schwarzkopf made the statement that leadership is the potent combination of strategy and character. And if you must be without one, be without strategy. Of course, he wasn't telling us that strategy is unimportant or that we shouldn't have strategy. But what he was emphasizing was is that people follow those who have character. The type of character that God wants for his leaders in the church. In a recent interview with Simon Sinek, retired Navy SEAL commander Rich Diveny talked about how that when we look at skills, they direct our behavior in known situations. But when we get into those unknown or uncertain situations, skills don't apply. We lean on our attributes. He's talking about our character. And it makes me wonder what attributes make up our character. And maybe we think about integrity, certainly a must needed attribute. And whether we're talking about how we conduct ourselves when no one is watching, or it's making the right decision, even when it's a difficult decision to make, no matter what it is, integrity is needed. Maybe we think about respect and the respect that we have for others, whether it's the respect that we demonstrate through our words or through our actions. Or maybe we think about credibility or competence the list goes on, and all of these are incredible attributes that make up our character. But I want to focus in on one particular attribute, an attribute that is so essential when it comes to our character. And what I'm talking about is trust. People will not follow someone they do not trust. Trust is such a viable commodity when it comes to leadership. And as we think about the idea of trust, we're talking about being trustworthy, worthy of trust. Several years ago, my wife and I attended a Chamber of Commerce banquet, and the guest speaker that night was Houston Nutt. Houston Nutt at the time was the head football coach of the Arkansas Razorback football program. And as he began to speak, he talked about how he and his staff met with every incoming freshman into the Razorback football program. And they wanted them to know the incredible privilege it was to be an Arkansas Razorback. And then they asked them three questions. One, can I trust you? Can I trust you to go to class? Can I trust you to do the work that your professors assign? Can I trust you to be on time? Can I trust you? The second question was, 
Are you committed? Are you committed to being an Arkansas Razorback? Are you committed to giving 100% of your effort, both on the field and off the field? Are you committed? And then the third question, when he asked it, I'm not sure what he said after that because my mind began to race in thinking about the spiritual application. The third question was, do you care? In my mind, I thought, if you take a group of people that you can trust, people who are committed and who care, you can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. And for leaders, the question I want us to focus in on is that first one. Can I trust you? Because the idea of being trustworthy involves two relationships. One is our relationship with God, and the other is our relationship with the people who follow us. Let's look at this first one, our relationship with God. If you're like me, most all of your life, you've heard lessons taught about the need for us to place our complete and total trust in God. And I get that. I'll never forget the first time my dad handed me his Bible, opened up to Proverbs 3. He knew I was so nervous. And he said, here, read this. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. I understand trust in the Lord. But that's not the question. The question is, can God trust you and me? Can he trust us? The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth and he made this statement that we're stewards of the mysteries of God and it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. Some translations use the word faithful. And isn't that really what faithfulness is all about? being worthy of someone's trust. So let's think for just a moment. Can God trust us to be good students of his word? Can he trust us to be honest with it, to handle it accurately, to dig beyond the surface, not just knowing the basics or the milk, or, but to go deep and to learn the truths that are there, to commit them to our lives, to apply them? Can God trust us to reach out to those who are outside of a relationship with Christ and lead them into that relationship? Can he trust us to love his church in a culture that is so divided politically, religiously, divided over opinions, and the list goes on and on, and it's affected the church. We're more divided today than ever before in history. Can God trust us? To put aside our pride and our petty opinions and love his church. Can he trust us to lead his people? There's never been a time in history greater than now for leadership in the Lord's church. Can he trust you and me to lead his people? But it's not just about our relationship with God, we need that as a foundation. Can God trust us? But we also need to consider, can the people we're leading trust us? Are we worthy of their trust? And what that means is we need all those attributes. Integrity, respect, credibility, competence. We need to be connected to them. And the list goes on. But we have to ask ourselves, can the people who follow us trust you and me? You know, no one could have ever foreseen a crisis like the pandemic that we continue to wrestle with in our world. It's not up to leaders to be able to foresee those events like a crisis or a pandemic that, that occurs in the world or in our culture or in our communities. It's up to leaders that when a crisis happens, to know how to act, what to do, what to say in order to lead people. And what we need to bring about growth in God's church is a leadership that has courage, that knows how to deal with change, that is connected to the people they lead, 
that they work in cooperation with others, that they are confident in their leadership, that they communicate and they build their leadership on the bedrock of a trustworthy character. That is what we need to help us lead God's people during a time of crisis or pandemic.